Let's leave the scholastic disputes to the experts about who was the first to decide that minivans can be made on the basis of compact models of the C-segment, the French, the Germans, or even the Japanese, ten years earlier. Only one thing is clear, in the line of compact vans, the Ford C-Max is by no means the last place. Hatred number five, are you going to take your liquid assets? Maxic of the first generation has long and firmly settled in the secondary market, and today the price of these cars fits into the range of 130 to 550,000 rubles. At the same time, they asked for 160 to 660,000 for single platform Focus 2, and if you start comparing offers, it turns out that with an equal level of equipment, similar sedans cost at least 100,000 more. In many reviews of the former owners of the Ford C-Max, it is stated that it is very difficult to sell this car, potential buyers have to be lured almost with honey. And the point here is not at all in some individual features of the model, but in the general low popularity of the class of compact minivans. So a young family that has chosen C-Max as a temporary, for a year or two, solution to the problem of acquiring a more voluminous car until the moment when they work up financial fat to buy a new car in the cabin will certainly face financial losses. And it is unlikely that he will be able to sell this car quickly enough to use the proceeds as a down payment. Love number five, choice of fifth point. C-Max is definitely not one of those cars about which they say I saw it, irrevocably fell in love and bought it. But, nevertheless, in so many reviews it is told about how we went to the salon to choose a car, and Maxic was not even considered as a possible option, but in the end we left the salon on it. Events developed something like this, a man came to the salon, climbed into the car he was looking at, sat closely, cheap hard plastic. And next to it is a C-Max, out of curiosity, I decided to take a look. Sat down and did not want to get out of it. This is because the car really has excellent ergonomics of the driver's seat. First, the very convenience of entry and exit. In most passenger models, when landing, you fall through down, and full-fledged SUVs you climb up, and in the Max you just move your ass from the street to the side, and you are already there. At the same time, even very tall people take their place behind the wheel without hitting their heads against any racks or openings. The landing itself is comfortable, the seat is height adjustable. Places with a margin, the head does not reach the roof, and someone even wrote that with a height of 186 centimeters, he can, sitting in an armchair, without any difficulty take off his coat without hitting the ceiling. The owners and interior trim materials are extremely positively assessed, they like the wood inserts, the quality of the velier upholstery, the white instrument lighting, and the leather on the steering wheel and gear knob, which is pleasant to feel in your hands. In general, as it was written in one of the reviews, in this car you feel like a person. Hatred number four, and how he squeals. However, the blissful description of excellent ergonomics and the quality of finishing materials is interspersed with complaints about the quality of plastic, primarily in the luggage compartment. It is really weakly able to resist scuffs and scratches. If you do not lay the luggage being transported with something soft, you will definitely scratch the lining. Often plastic latches break. There is a chance to scratch the plastic elements of the rearview mirrors, and you need to wipe them carefully. As a rule, there are no complaints about the front panel, but the rest of the cabin may well become the abode of many crickets. A huge number of reviews mention problems with the paintwork, they are generally characteristic of modern models with environmentally friendly staining methods. The paint on the bumpers also suffers, and the glass is also very scratched, especially the rear one. Due to the peculiarities of the washer device, the brush passes about a third of the way through the glass on dry, picking up abrasive and scratching the surface with it. Finally, the noise in the cabin. The owners do not have any unanimity in his assessment. Someone generally considers noise isolation to be the advantage of the model. Someone writes that there is noise, but at the level of all other cars, and therefore it is not annoying. But there are many who complain that consider no noise, and it is the road noise that comes from the arches that annoys. Love number four, there are miracles, there are children roaming. And yet, a person who buys a compact van does not choose it because of the ergonomics of the driver's seat. 
He wants to get the volume that hatchbacks, sedans, and even station wagons cannot provide. And here the C-Max is quite consistent with the tasks. Three adults fit in the back row, two plump and one thin. But the interior transformation scheme invented by Ford engineers is not so unambiguously assessed. Some people really like it, especially the ability to move the two rear seats back and get the comfort of an executive sedan for passengers, but for some, the practicality of such a scheme is a big question. In addition, with this configuration, the volume of the already not very large trunk, however, a baby stroller or a set of four wheels still fits in it, is literally reduced to a glove box. But if you remove the rear seats, and this is done without the use of crowbars, axes, sledgehammers, and the mention of someone's mother, the cargo volume increases to 1,700 liters. 3 meter slats, a refrigerator 185 centimeters high, a disassembled cabinet, all this fits, the door closes, and there is still room. T. Nevertheless, many believe that the C-Max is still not suitable for a large family, although it is just right for two adults and two children. Hatred number three, look what they invented. In principle, the C-Max has proven itself to be a fairly reliable car, but of course, it needs maintenance. Upon reaching certain mileage, it requires the replacement of the same stabilizer struts, shock absorbers, or wheel bearings. There are also unsuccessful instances, and then the review about the car turns into an endless enumeration of repairs, and ends, as a rule, with an emotional statement in the style of this was my first and last Ford, or now I try to bypass Ford showroom seven miles away, and I advise you. It is worth recognizing that there are few such reviews, but there are enough complaints about unsuccessful design solutions. For example, one of the most common MAX engines is a 125 horsepower gasoline 4, and the problem of floating revolutions is very characteristic of it. Those who do not know what and how to do in the event of such a soar are very fond of branded services, since you can bill 10 to 15,000 rubles for its solution. In fact, to bring the motor to life, it is enough just to flush the throttle. For bolts, two clamps, acetone, or a can of aerosol cleaner, and half an hour of work. The main thing is to carefully remove the throttle actuator connector without breaking or losing the retainer. Many owners have encountered a situation where all the errors light up on the panel at once, the instrument arrows begin to live their lives, but the car continues to move as if nothing had happened. In this case, you need to remove the panel, inspect it from the back, and check the wire loop suitable for it. Most likely, microcracks formed in them. Half an hour of careful work with a soldering iron and you can forget about the problem. Structurally, the C-Max is quite simple and many owners do their own maintenance. Indeed, changing the engine air filter or pads is not a problem, but replacing the cabin filter is a problem, and what else, because the designers placed it behind the pedal assembly. As one of the owners wrote, changing this filter, he constantly remembers not only the engineers who put him there, but also all their relatives up to the third generation. Because to replace the filter, you need to remove the gas pedal, move the brake pedal, then remove the old filter, put a new one in its place, and, finally, remount the pedals. Well, or such a moment, when you try to turn on the reverse gear, such a delicious crunch is heard that another Cam AZ will envy. And why wouldn't he be heard if there is no reverse gear synchronizer in the design of the box, and a double squeeze is needed for normal reverse gear engagement? Show me that unfortunate engineer who invented this in the 21st century, one of the owners exclaims temperamentally, and I can quite understand him. There are also minor ergonomic flaws. Everything in the cabin is great, but there are no shelves where you can throw your phone, glasses, lighter. Cup holders for the rear passengers do not perform their function, they are too small, and nothing is held in them. The design of the rear row mounts offers a very original way of fixing when folding with a cord to the front seat. The windshield heating system, which is actually very praised, for some reason consists of two independent halves, which fail quite independently. And, finally, the operation of the windshield wipers is such that in the middle of the windshield there is always an uncleaned area on which a dirty snot hangs. It, in fact, does not interfere with the review, but it is terribly annoying. Love number three, caring for the wallet. 
one of the most important parameters for any family car is economy, and in this regard, the Ford C-Max is generally rated very positively. Naturally, the owners of diesel versions expressed the most enthusiasm. One of them wrote, I am ready to forgive him a lot for his careful attitude to my wallet. On the highway, the consumption of diesel fuel is 4.2 to 4.6 L slash 100 km, and in the city 6.4 L slash 100 km. This is not economical for everyone, but even for those who like to press the trigger at every opportunity and leave the car in the heat or frost for a couple of hours with a rattling diesel engine and a working air conditioning system, the consumption, as a rule, does not exceed 7, 5 to 8.5 liters per hundred. Gasoline engines, of course, are less economical, but even the most voracious of them, a 2 liter, it is most often written about him that I would like the appetite to be a little less, consumes an average of about 10 to 10.5 L slash 100 kilometers, which, in general, it is typical for an aspirated engine of this volume. Naturally, consumption is highly dependent on the load of the car and driving style. And the consumption is highly dependent on the pressure in the wheels, and this has been verified by many owners empirically. According to the instructions, the pressure should be 2.4 atmospheres, and if you reduce it to 1.8 ATM for greater smoothness, then the difference will be more than a liter per hundred. Hate number two, forward please, back thank you. In principle, the owners evaluate the visibility in the C-Max quite positively, because the principle I sit high, I look far away has not yet been cancelled. The situation, of course, is somewhat spoiled by massive A pillars with windows, which, by the way, many people consider absolutely useless, blocking the view forward and to the left. It takes some getting used to and the complete absence of the hood line in sight, this is especially true for people with little driving experience. But significant claims concern the review back. Side mirrors move objects away and deceive in assessing the distance, and wide rear pillars and a constantly dirty rear window interfere with the view into the cabin. It really throws it very quickly, you can't defy the laws of aerodynamics. The owners are trying to do something either spoilers or overlays, but it doesn't seem to help much. Well, in winter, the rear window completely turns into a tank embrasure. By the way, naturally, not only the glass gets dirty, but the entire back door, and without getting your hands dirty, you can't open the trunk. Love number two, there is everything, like in Greece. There is another reason why buyers tended to buy Ford C-Max, whether new or used. This is a rich equipment of the car with a variety of comfortable options. At a quite affordable price, Max pleases with electric windows and mirrors, and in some trim levels, the driver's seat, the ability to open or close windows with a key, heated seats and windshield, regular curtains on the rear windows, cruise control, sensors rain and light, and, finally, an additional mirror in the cabin for monitoring passengers, which is especially useful in the case of families with young children. Many separately highlight the advantages of the air conditioning system, despite the fact that it cools the interior very quickly, you do not need to look for the optimal position of the deflectors so that it does not blow in the face, or, more importantly, on the child. Cold air fills the cabin by itself, as if by chance. By the way, at a temperature of plus 32 overboard, the climate control set to plus 22 creates an excellent atmosphere in the cabin, and even at plus 45, according to the owners, you feel quite comfortable. Not bad equipped C-Max for winter. The reviews especially note heated seats with five modes of operation and a heated windshield. Indeed, it is pleasant to press one button and then brush off the thawed ice crust, while the neighbor in the parking lot continues to frantically torment the glass of his car with a plastic scraper. Hate number one, learn to jump over puddles. But the absolute and main congenital defect of the Ford C-Max, former and present owners, consider too little ground clearance. It is noted as a significant drawback in almost all reviews on the internet, and even in those where the car as a whole is rated more than positively. Indeed, according to the Passport, the clearance of the C-Max is 150 mm, but in reality it is less. Someone writes that it is no more than 130, and someone thinks that installing a crankcase reduces it to 120 or even 100 mm, and this is in our conditions already at any gate. 
You go and you feel that you are catching even the dust on the road with your belly. So in a number of reviews of former owners, it is precisely this inability to adapt to our road conditions that is indicated as the main reason for the sale. But even this is not enough. There are a lot of horror stories on the internet that driving a max even through a not very deep puddle can lead to water hammer since the air intake is under the wing and a jet of water from the wheels flies straight into it. And it's not just horror stories. The victim testifies, I drove through a small puddle and received a water hammer from the engine. As a result, a replacement, naturally, at your own expense, and this is quite noticeable. Love number one, what a smart trailer. The main thing for which they love the C-Max is the practicality, versatility, and volume of the passenger compartment that are not due to minivans. Many people take this for granted. The main thing is the fighting character inherited along with the platform. Maxic, of course, is far from being a racing car, but when necessary, healthy sports anger and assertiveness are manifested in it. You can also drive when you are in the mood. And you don't always come to the next traffic light last. But this is still not the main thing. The main thing is that C-Max is able, when necessary, to shoot and adequately get out of a difficult traffic situation. Agree, with our athletes in the city we often have to do this. And the question is not who will be the first to leave the traffic light, but, for example, how to avoid a collision when another eccentric rushes in the opposite direction at nine on steep skating rinks and with a subwoofer half a trunk, presenting himself as a cool Schumacher. Many owners write that the main thing in this car is driving pleasure. It is interesting that owners of diesel versions express the greatest enthusiasm about the dynamic capabilities of the C-Max. Naturally, no one constantly drives in the 180 to 200 mode, but very many people note excellent handling. The presence of three modes of operation of the electric power steering has a positive effect, sport, hard, comfort, soft, and normal. All rebuilding is carried out clearly, the car tenaciously clings to the road. There are a lot of absolutely enthusiastic statements in the reviews. The only caveat, you need to be careful in the right turns, because of the rear suspension thruster, you can easily catch the threshold on the curbstone. Of course, such dynamics and controllability has its price, and this price concerns driving comfort. The suspension is set up quite stiffly, and this is especially felt when moving at a speed of sharp and high road bumps, and the maximum smoothness of the ride is achieved at full load. But no feeling of bus.